and afternoon folks. I've been busy today. It's Friday and we're on a fire alert. It's like I'm just busy. All right. It's first of the month. I'm running around doing things. I just came home from the office because I want to do this video. Happy fire up Friday. Okay. Enough of that. Now, a lot of people ask me, oh, it isn't that hot. What the hell it is. Okay, it's 103. It dropped. And it's going to get worse. Ugh. And it says, warning, air conditions will continue the rest of the day. Please stay indoor if you have lung trouble. No kidding. There's one app I have to check every day. If it's really bad, I have to wear, uh, whatchamacallit, so I can breathe. Now, check out Cold War Prepper, Lee's channel. He did a wonderful response on the New York PSA, and he agrees with them. I disagree with them because we have. Uh, whatchamacallit, we agree on one thing, but we disagree on a few points. If it's a combination of an airstrike and a ground strike, you're kind of screwed. And the ones in, used in Hiroshima and Nagasaki was kilotons. Okay? We're talking some of the uh, newer missiles are megatons or multi-kiloton warheads. All right? So do your own research. Check out on... Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they made movies. A lot of people said uh, the fallout wasn't that bad on both areas. Yes, it was. The atomic footprint. They have a 50s movie about that and later on in the 90s explaining the open air test of nuclear weapons in Nevada deserts. And St. George, Utah, was during those tests between 1948 until 62, was constantly bombarded with fallout and nobody told them because they were guinea pigs. All right, that's my viewpoint. Now, Lee's explanation is correct and he got everything. I'm covering the little holes, okay? Like I said, the Soviets have a down pat on this one. This is printed since the 70s. And they covered a lot of things about heat exhaustion, how many minutes can you stand, and if you're a civilian and you don't have stuff, again, you could use a simple surgical cloth mask because we're not getting rid of viruses. We're preventing three kinds of radiation, alpha, beta, and gamma fallout particles. You don't want to breathe that dust. A lot of people don't understand. A lot of survivors either dies within three months of exposure because of inhaling dust. Now, a lot of us, because of the Red Dragon, we got a whole bunch of N95s. That should be part of your uh, fallout kit. A simple kit is you get a disposable poncho with a hood. You get some kind of eye protection, okay? I prefer if you got skateboard glasses or snowboard goggles or ski goggles, that's even better. Or if you don't have one, you wrap around eyewear. Now I have to wear a tent because see how bright that is? So I got full, it closes down on my face, over my eyes, and such. Now if you don't have an N95 mask, they said use a three by four gauze mask, put it into a handkerchief or a scarf so you don't breathe in the particle. And what you do is after you use it, you dump out the pad out of the scarf, you shake it. And remember what the Soviet says, you want to step on a tarp. People still don't get it. Why? You don't want to take off all your clothes and recontaminate, okay? So it's simple. You have this, you have this, and you have duct tape, and you have some kind of glove. It could be leather glove, it could be nitro glove, 
give me surgical gloves. I tell a lot of people, yeah, there's another choice if you get dishwashing gloves at the Dollar Tree. It's simple and duct tape it to the outfits. Now I want to show you a few outfits. This is a poncho. They have a Disneyland, if you look on Amazon, they have a, a suit type. It's only the top. It has hood, but it has cuffs wrist. All right, it's very simple. Now, we both agree you have to get out, but you have to watch the movie Where the Wind Blows. And I'm going to, no, I can't do it right now, but Where the Wind Blows. It was a big movie in the 80s and 90s. Go check it out. If you watch my older video, it explains Fallout. Okay? You should get this book. You do not want to inhale the particles. You do not want the skin exposure to the particles. And Leo's right. If you see the blast with your thumb, okay, that's how many minutes you got to get to shelter. Now, unfortunately, if you're in the city and you see that, your thumb's gone, your fingers and your eyeballs are white or burnt out of your skull. Too many channels and other PSA are showing you blast shelters. And like if you watch the movie Where the Wind Blows, it's kind of useless because they weren't designed for fallout. And if you watch Practice Prepper Homesteader Survivalist, he designed an air filter, not inside the bunker, but outside the bunker with a four inch pipe. Every country in the world is either 6 or 12. We ain't stupid. And it, he did not have any. There's a whole chapter on exhaust valve. He doesn't have an exhaust system. So all he does is pumping in air and he overpressurized it. Okay, one thing. And the second thing is he doesn't have anything to release bad air out from the shelter. So you got carbon dioxide poisoning, carbon monoxide poisoning, body waste, fluids. Think about that. On four people on that little space, it's not going to be good. Okay, that's practice prep. You can check out his channel. Again, when you decontaminate, the last thing you take off is this. You stand on this, okay? Only cost me two bucks. You brush everything off your contaminated clothing. Put this down. First thing you do is take off your headwear. If you don't have a hood, you take off the headwear. It could be a cap with something wrapped around your neck. I seen one video where the guy used a shopping bag, cut a hole in it, put his face through it, and cover. That's simple. It's logical and simple, but you have to be careful. Don't do it like this one guy. Put a turkey bag over his head, zip it tight, and pass out from suffocation. All right. You want to keep it simple. I like how the Russians do it. They explain everything about alternative clothing and ventilation and how to read the meters and do testing and rotogen. They have like six chapters on radiation, how to monitor and everything. And I'm trying to find it, this book, it's a big textbook. You should put down on a piece of plastic it into your clothes. That way they could identify the body. Because they said sooner or later, somebody will goof up and won't follow procedure and die from radiation. And uh, I had it marked. They even have plans for saving your cattle and livestock. Okay. 
back to this. If you don't have a hood, wear a tight fitting cap over your ears. Okay. Some kind of goggles and some kind of face protection. Like a mask or a handkerchief or something. You could use regular overalls. You could use a trench coat. and They have a whole section writing that down. Make sure you got a scarf to cover the neck. All right. You don't want anything exposed. They explain that carefully. Now, luckily, I did a few examples. I brought them out. And if you read this book, Uniforms. Okay. Ah, I have to get up. Oh, Lord, my back hurts. Now, here's my storm coat. And it has a hood. It's well vented. So I can wear this. And it has cuffs that I could tighten up. Put on that, have gloves over it. Don't need to worry about duct taping it. And this is a full length. So it goes down to my knees. A lot of people don't think that when they buy rain gear. Okay. During World War I, people had trench coats. Now, this one doesn't have it, but the old days trench coats used to have a strap and a button. So the officers, when it's a gas attack, close this up. All right, you button. Now, if you look at that, it's pretty well sealed up. Why? Because trench coats were designed for the officers in World War I to prevent gas warfare. Okay, this one has a vent and has a lining for winter. You could take that out and you could use that for radiation protection, like the Soviets wrote in this book. You go check out my older videos and that explains why. Then brush off your clothing, all the contaminates off. You see, we live in America, so we have disposable. A lot of places in the world don't have disposable. So if you have to do stuff later on outside, you take it out of the protective bag. Now, Soviets realized this back in the 70s, and they have a system of decontamination. They also understand that a lot of city functions will not work. So you want either a jug or a insecticide spray or a pump spray to spray yourself down. One with a slopey solution, one with a water solution. Okay? Explain. This one, from fully protected, uh, whatchamacallit, either silicon spray, wax spray, whatever you spray they have, will stop any permeation, and then you brush it off. I was reading that chapter last night again. And the reason why is because it was a part of a uniform in World War I to prevent mud, cold, and gas attacks. Okay? They preferred a spray over the wax because the wax was sticky and then you had to destroy the uniform. So they figured out a different compound for that. Okay? Again, read out about Fallout. And go check out the movie Where the Wind Blows. Now, if it's a combination of air burst and ground burst, you're kind of screwed. If you're in the atomic footprint, you got to figure out how far away, how big is the blast and shockwave area, if your cell phones will be still working or not. Probably not. Or and water. So you don't have any sewage, you don't have any water. That's why they came with this and this to decontaminate first. Remember, this part is the last part you take off. Okay, and again, you put it in a bag for decontamination or disposal. If it's something like this, you can put it in a bag with whatever and it's disposed of. If you got booties or covers, that's fine. If you have heavy duty boots, Okay, waiters, you can wash them off, rinse them, decontaminate it, and hang dry for the next use. Same goes with a coat. All right? 
you hang dry, air it out, check with it with a radiation monitor if you did a good job. If you don't, it'll click like a bug. All right, then you have to do the whole process again. Why the drop cloth? America is, they just want to get, skip things. The Soviets doesn't, they had a whole chapter on why the drop cloth. Drop cloth will catch any residue radiation. You don't want like after 40 people, you have a pile of radiation in your decontamination area. That's a bad sign of mismanagement. You have a drop cloth, so you decontaminate it, roll it up, it goes in a separate bag saying drop cloth with radiation on it. Not hard, and it comes with a marking pen. Okay, you write time of decontamination and you write what you were wearing, whatever, on the bag. And if it's a drop cloth, they'll either dispose of it, reuse it, or decontaminate it, depending on the drop cloth. Okay, this is a long explanation, but I have to get everything done. Okay, once you decontaminate it, you got clothing, you have slippers. Okay, and they explained all that, and you go into the shelter. A lot of shelters, if properly designed and located in buildings, are fine and safe. The only two problems is are designed for blast and shock wave and fire. You don't want to be in a building that's crumbling down and you're trapped underneath it and no way out. Two, you want to know about fallout and radiation. There's a lot of movies that doesn't cover this, except for one or two. Um, the one for, was it set in Australia with Gregory Peck? Yas Lee, a Cold War prepper, he, On the Beach by Neil Shuttle. Go check that one out. Or you could check, uh, whatchamacallit, Where the Wind Blows. And there's a Japanese one called Black Rain. Not the Kirk Douglas movie, but the effects of limited fallout on Nagasaki and Hiroshima and the surrounding areas. Okay. From 1948 to 1953, uh, there were a lot of infants. Uh, you kill babies. Infants lie. Because they come out like, yeah, all mutated. And that scared the hell out of people. Also scared a lot of the American scientists there. First one who, after a few months, they came over there and on the heavier sites, they tested everybody and checked everybody. They didn't know about fallout. They didn't know about res res uh, residual radiation. And a lot of those guys died from cancer. A lot of the Almon, uh, the, the from Mexico, New Mexico, Los Altamos, New Mexico died from lung cancer. So you do not want to get those particles in your lungs. Okay, do your own research, read up on everything. I'd be paranoid as hell. Okay, don't care about the delivery system. You want to worry about the footprint, where, if they're going to bomb you. If not, because things have changed, all right? Well, these data is based on uh, 1980, 1970, 1990s, and the early 2000s. Things have changed, all right? So do your own research. A lot of foreign powers have surrounded a lot of bases. In Hawaii, 50% of the property around Pearl Harbor is owned by Chinese, okay, or BlackRock. You can check your military base. Either go check, see what kind of business there, or you can check BlackRock's record. They're also another shadow company of the CCP. Also, the Russians do it. They have a lot in Florida, so they're not going to nuke Florida. Why? Because why are we nuking our own men? That's kind of stupid, all right? If they're part of the community and they know what's going on, they're going to offer them a deal. Now, they can't make this deal against the blue states. I don't trust anybody in the blue states. You know, and the, and the Russians and the Chinese consider them total enemies or puppets of either side. Russia and China are worried that 
one of the two, it's like, yeah, let's get rid of the USA. I'll hold the guns and you take care of them. No, you hold the guns and I'll, I'll take care of them. So they don't really trust each other and they have the longest borders. So they have the guns pointed at each other. We're in the middle and we have a weak, insepid Captain Crazy trying to start a nuclear war. Okay? Fine. I don't care. But what materials I got, you can do your own research and find out where they're going to mostly, if it's a threat to them right away, I'll take it out. If it's a training site, transport, okay? All you have to do is, well, we control the unions and the railroads and the trucking industry. See, the last couple of years, I don't think they're going to get resupply. So we're going to have a lot of people overseas trapped. Nobody wants to hear the truth. You have comfortable lies on one side and you have the truth on the other side. This is the hard clap to wake you up. I, all I care is take care of my flock. Okay? And I think I cut, covered everything. You should get this one. Know how to read a Geiger counter and radioactive uh, radiological equipment. I have a dosimeter. I have a charger for the dosimeter. I have badges that haven't opened up in case there's a exposure radiation, peel it out, open it, put it on. And that was like five years ago, so they're still good because I read the expiration date. But like I said, if you want to make a simple kit, N95, poncho with some kind of covering, duct tape, and do what the PSA says. Stay indoors, stay away from windows, decontaminate but a lot of people are like I'll decontaminate don't forget the drop cloth because if you're inside you don't want to contaminate that area all right you have to think ahead so you're in the little hallway you pick it up and you throw it out all right this is a problem with apartments or in basements you have to de designate an area where you could decontaminate and I'll catch you later I'm just tired. I got a lot of things to do today, and making videos isn't one of them. Uh, up and down my street, I so showed you that video about the plug. I'm having an electrician friend of mine, and a lot of my friends and neighbors around here are at installing these plugs to their houses and circuit board and how to do it. All right, we've been planning this, and it's getting around so we don't have to worry about your problem. So check out that short. And check out WD Glock and Roll. He has one. I have one. My neighbors are currently getting them installed. It's not that hard. It's not rocket science. You do need a separate panel to shut off things. But, you know, not rocket science, folks. And I'll catch you later. I'll be seeing you. You have a nice day. Bye now.